Well, I believe it's time to begin. My name is Kerry Vondros, and you might see Dave up there as a pre presenter, but uh, actually I'm just on the site uh, using his site so I can present this. I'm an independent contractor working for Sound Seal, and I'll be doing the presenting on this um, acoustical masonry seminar. The goal of this presentation is to present a basic general knowledge of acoustical concrete masonry. The presentation topics include the use of cavity resonators within the hard surface spaces. We will examine basic noise principles and how acoustical masonry works as both a noise absorber and isolator. We will look at a brief cost study and end with some acoustic acoustical masonry applications. Acoustical concrete masonry are in the wall built volume resonators that effectively suppress noise and improve sound quality for increased occupant safety and comfort. In the 1960s, sound blocks acoustical masonry was introduced. Concrete block were made to form cavity resonators. These block were made to take the place of regular concrete masonry units when forming a structural wall. These slot type resonators are molded with a solid top, which produces uniformly sized cavity spaces. So each, each block would make two resonators within the sing a single unit. In the 1990s, stacking volume resonators began to be produced. They are hollow cord units formed without a separating solid top. Instead of slotted apertures on the face of the units, the faces are skewed to allow the sound to enter through apertures formed on the cross webs. When laid in a wall, continuous cavities are formed, creating superior low frequency noise absorption. Both cap cavity and stacking volume resonators have internal structures greater than the one or two inches thick that you'd see on fabric panels. So they are efficient at absorbing noise below 500 Hertz, which is difficult to absorb with a lot of other absorbers. The big difference between sound blocks cap cavity and the sound cell stacking volume resonator is the internal structure. The stacking volume resonators provide nearly 100% average, average absorption efficiency at the 100, 125, 160, and 200 hertz frequencies. This is because the units are stacked and they form large vertical volume resonators capable of absorbing the long sound waves of very low frequencies. Just like you need large pipe organs to generate low bass sounds, you need large cavity resonators to capture them. And so on the right hand side, you see sound blocks, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sound cell and acoustic units have these form stack volume resonators and they're really good at absorbing low bass sounds. All acoustical masonry units come with factory installed acoustical fillers. Acoustical masonry resonators are structured to absorb uh, the mid to low frequencies. And then by inserting the semi-rigid fiberglass baffles within the units, it baffles the resonator and broadens the resonant frequency absorption at the middle and high frequencies. So it makes a complete package. You've got the structure of the, the resonator by the unit being formed, and then you have these inserts within to help broaden the frequency. The next section will review basic noise principles, starting with sound absorption. How well various materials absorb sound is measured according to ASTM C423 standards. 
A testing chamber is constructed with highly reflective concrete walls. Then a test material is assembled within the room. You can see that on the picture on the right, it shows the stacking volume resonators being used and tested. A full spectrum of noise with known sound pressure levels is generated within the chamber. Then a frequency response microphone within the same room records the decibel level reduction at 18 frequencies from 100 hertz to 5,000. An absorption coefficient for each frequency is then calculated by dividing the chamber, the ch I'm sorry, the change in the room absorption by the area of the test panel. Some of the mid-range frequencies are averaged and then the material is assigned an NRC rating and they only, they only assign just a few of the, of the um, absorption frequencies. So the NRC, which stands for noise reduction coefficient is formulated. It's a single number representation of the amount of sound energy absorbed upon striking a particular surface. An NRC of zero indicates perfect reflection. An NRC of one indicates perfect absor absorption. <laughs> Excuse me. An open window has an NRC of one, so no sound bounces back into the room and it's a perfect absorber, so to speak. The NRC is calculated by averaging the sound absorption coefficients at four mid-range mid frequencies the 250, the 500, 1000, and 2000, and then they round that average to the nearest 0.05 increment. Human speech is mostly heard between the 250 and 1000 hertz, so the NRC was initially developed to provide a simplistic number of how well a material will absorb human voice. However, merely relying on the NRC to determine the effectiveness of an absorber is a mistake. As an example, let's compare a one inch fabric panel to 12 inch sound cell and a 12 inch sound block RSCRF unit resonators. The one inch panel has an NRC of 0.95, which is near perfection in absorption. The 12 inch sound cell units have an NRC of 0.70. And the 12 inch sound block units, you can see, have an NRC of 0 0.80. But those are only at those frequencies. So typically, by just looking at the NRC numbers on the right and trying to determine which is the best ab ab absorber, you'd probably say, well, it's got to be the 0.95, the, the wall panel. But this would be a mistake because it all depends upon what you're using the absorber. Uh, to try and absorb what sound. So if you look at the one inch, looking at the graph, the one inch panels, which is the blue line, they have very marginal low absorption at the low end on the left hand side of the scale. The sound blocks units, which is the gray line, excel at the mid low range. You can see they peak at from 315 to 800 Hertz. So they're really good absorbers within that range. And then the sound cell units, which is the orange line, offer tremendous low frequency absorption and almost complete absorption at the 125 hertz octave band, which is critical in controlling standing wave resonant frequency within a room. So if designing acoustical treatments for mechanical equipment rooms generating low rumbles and roars or band rooms with tubas, drums, and bass guitars, the one inch panels would be of little worth in absorbing the noise actually generated. So when designing for acoustics, say no to the NRC numbers and instead know the noise. When designing to control problem noises, produced by amplified music or mechanical and electrical equipment, understand these noise sources have substantial low frequency energy. This noise is well below the NRC targeted frequencies of the 500 Hertz and above. So forget the NRC rating in these applications and match the material absorber to the noise frequency that will be generated. 
cap cavity and stacking volume resonators will effectively absorb absorb the rumble and roar of pumps, transformers, and generators. And so in addition to the absorption, the other major method of solving acoustical problems is through sound isolation. And acoustical masonry walls are effective noise barriers. So a practical solution to isolate the noise is to put up a barrier. And how well the material blocks noise from passing through it may be attested, may be tested according to ASTM E90 standards and then an STC rating is determined. STC is an acronym for sound transmission class. It is an integer rating of how well a building partition dampens airborne sound. A test chamber is set up with noise source room and a listening room. The, the noise source room would be on the left and the, the listening room on the right on this illustration. And an opening between the two rooms is filled with partition material to be tested. Sound pressure is generated in the source room at 16 standard frequencies from 125 Hertz to 4,000. Then a response microphone records the decibel levels at each frequency in the listening room. The, the balance between these values is the sound transmission loss. These values are plotted on a standard transmission loss curve and assigned an integer rating, which is the sound transmission class or STC rating. The higher the STC rating, the better the partition test material is at blocking noise from transferring through its matrix. The STC rating improves with mass and weight. A six inch wall built with wood studs and drywall on the left there has an STC of 34. Normal speech can be heard coming through it. The onset of privacy begins with an STC of 40. The same six inch wide wall, but built out of masonry achieves an STC of 46. At this level, loud speech would become inaudible. If the six inch masonry wall was filled with grout, it would achieve an STC of 53. This would block very loud noises like musical instruments and stereos. Even though it is twice as wide, a 12 inch hollow, ST, hollow CMU has similar mass and weight as a filled six inch and has the same STC rating. So you can see, I don't know if you can see my, the STC CMU, and the 12 inch CMU both have um, 53, I'm sorry, the, the grout filled and the STC 12 inch plane. So the idea is not merely to build thicker walls, but to construct heavy, dense walls that will not vibrate. And exceptional soundproofing is achieved with any system that can offer an STC over 60. With, if you get, if so if you take a 12 inch wall, fill it solid, you have an STC of 63. And this will block just about any sound from going through that wall and penetrating through it. It's, it's, it's superb. STC ratings for sound cell acoustical masonry can be found on their website, acousticalmasonry.com. And ratings for both the unfilled and filled units are provided. By filling the back, just the back portions of the units, extremely high STC values may be achieved. You can see Sound cell with the back filled can get a 55 STC. Sound blocks filled has an STC of 60. Even unfilled, they have a really good uh, 51, 48, 52, 54. So they will both absorb sound in one room and they will block sound from passing through going to the next room. An example of this is this case study. These These photos are of the Wacker Corporation Technical Academy. They have an interior training facility where they demonstrate their concrete placement equipment. And then following that, they conduct classes demonstrating their concrete removal equipment. So they'll put down concrete and then tear it up and put down concrete and tear it up. All the equipment that they utilize, the buggies, the finishers, the jackhammers, 
are all very noisy and they produce very low sound frequencies. So what the architects did here and then uh, the, the acousticians uh, designed sound cell units and they laid them floor to ceiling to arrest the equipment noise within the working space so that they could teach at the same time and run the equipment and wasn't damaging to the hearing of the, the attendees. And then on the other side of these masonry walls, they had classrooms. And with the system, the sound cell units absorbed 70% of the equipment noise, while they also provided a, sam a substantial sound isolation barrier with an STC rating of 55. So you could use them both in both applications. And then we'll just do a real quick uh, condensed cost analysis comparing acoustical fabric panels to that of acoustical masonry. And this is a real world multi-purpose room that was designed for an academy, taking the dimensions. There, it was 64 foot wide by 96 foot long and 20 foot high. The walls totaled 64,000 square foot and it required 71,000 CMUs to construct. An analysis performed for the adequate or an appropriate square foot of acoustical fabric panels and as well as the acoustical masonry units that would be needed to uh, bring the reverberation down to tolerable limits. And we can see from this, um, we'll go through the whole thing, but the, the pricing for the panels was 13,000 and the installation cost was 4,000, roughly a little bit over. The total cost for the system came up to be 17,450. And this was an abbreviated summary of what the study was. Um, then the same thing was done with acoustical masonry and where they took, you're supposed to use between two and 2.5%. Um, this one used 2.3% in between that. And they came up with 2,681 square foot, which was, it differed by from the fabric panels only by 11 square foot. Transferring the square foot to CMUs, you needed 316 acoustical masonry units. And then we added those in and we took out the, the cost of the regular CMUs that they replaced. And the masons would have to lay either one so that the installation cost would be the same. Well, the system then totaled 17,786. And then comparing the two, even though the acoustical masonry units was a little bit higher, it was only higher by 2%, which, so you, you comparing the two systems, you have, two different systems that relatively the same cost. But for almost the identical price, a designer can choose between the fragile add-on or system or a permanent non-destructive built-in noise suppressing system that will also absorb low frequency noise. And then these benefits that you see is not only available to multi-purpose rooms, but they would apply equally well to other interior environments. And so that will be the last section here. We'll be looking at some um, applications of the acoustical masonry in hard surface environments. Auto clarity of stage performance is critical to their success and good auditoriums and theaters require noise control Besides controlling reflection through absorption, acoustical masonry also produces load bearing strength and structure to the building. So not only does it absorb noise, but it holds up the roof and it gives a solid wall to the building itself. And then the purpose of a band is to make noise. Sound block and sound cell will arrest band room noise including the low frequency noise of drums, tubas, and bass instruments that will escape absorption with fabric panels. And as a reminder, the, the acoustical masonry will also provide sound barrier to keep the sound from traveling into adjacent classrooms or hallways or whatever's on the opposite side of those walls. 
Acoustical fabric panels typically will not stay clean when they are in proximity to high school students with food in their hands. Whereas on these applications, there are excellent solutions to controlling noisy cafeterias. Here we have two architects that utilize identical design strategies. They had low bearing walls supporting roof trusses. Clear story windows were placed in the truss space to admit natural light. The architect on the left selected plain Jane precast walls with flat panel add-on acoustics. The smart architect on the right decided on concrete masonry walls with built-in acoustics, which gave his design delight, full visual character, and acoustical well-being. They're both going to perform well. This, uh, the one on the right will perform in a broader range of frequency absorption, and it looks pretty cool. Pools and auditoriums consist of water, which is an excellent reflector of noise. Acoustical masonry is an excellent choice to control noise in human environments, and they'll last the life of the building, and they won't get dirty or fall off the walls from humidity. So now we're nearing the end of the presentation. If you have a question, please type it in the question box in the interface on the right of your screen. For ad additional information regarding Sound Seal's acoustical masonry products or to discuss a future project, please contact either David Ingersoll or Mike Keeney, and they can be reached at this, um, their email addresses, or give them a call and to, or talk to them or the Sound Seal sales team. If you have questions regarding this presentation or acoustical masonry design, I would be pleased to hear from you. And here's my um, here's my email. You can contact me. So, what are the best candidates for providing acoustical comfort in hard surface rooms? Both sound blocks and sound cell acoustical masonry will drain swampy noise. And I'll look to see if we have any comments or questions here. Well, with no questions, then uh, I guess we'll just end this session. And thank you very much for attending.